Hey guys, in this video I'm going to be reviewing this shotgun microphone, which is the Cinco D2. And this is like a budget version of the MKH416. Now I've been eyeing this microphone for quite a while now, so I'm happy that I finally have it and I can test it out uh, and kind of share my experience with you guys. And, uh, and, and I've really become interested in this mic after I watched the review by Booth Junkie, where he literally has this microphone right next to the MKH416 which, uh, if you don't know, is used pretty much as the go-to microphone on all the biggest uh, film and TV productions. And he literally has this microphone right next to that, and throughout his whole video, he keeps on switching between the two mics, uh, except he doesn't tell you until later on in the video, <laughs> and you honestly cannot tell the difference. This mic sounds exactly like the MKH416, uh, except obviously the the biggest difference is that MKH416 costs a thousand dollars and this one right now is around two hundred dollars uh, you guys can actually find some discounts and all that stuff as always if you want to find the, the best prices and best deals uh, then just follow the links in the description of this video or check out my website at tomantisfilms.com anyways in this video I the all the audio is being recorded through this mic uh, and it's being fed directly here to my Rodecaster Pro now, I do not have any audio processing. Normally, when I do YouTube videos, I do obviously process the audio just, just so that the vocals sound better, kind of more alive and full. Well, in this case, like I said, it might not sound the most exciting. Uh, and the reason is simply because I wanted you guys to hear what the actual microphone sounds before you do any kind of processing. So, uh, you know, just keep that in mind that, like I said, uh, if you were to do some processing, whether here in your recorder or uh, later on in your video editing, you can obviously make the sound very full, very exciting. Uh, also, right now you'll notice I have this windscreen which comes with the microphone. Uh, that's going to help you a little bit with some wind noise or kind of, you know, uh, for example, if you're talking really too close to the microphone and that kind of stuff with some of the pops. But I'm going to take it off actually right now because it will take away some of the higher frequency sounds. So again, so I want you guys to hear just the, um, you know, raw audio coming in from this microphone. And by the way, the microphone comes, like I said, with this windscreen, also comes with a case. And let me open it up. And inside you'll find the manual, you'll find a little XLR cable, uh, and they also give you a little adapter for mic stand. It also comes with this little microphone holder. Now, obviously, this is okay for this kind of a setup, but if you're going to be out on location, sort of handling the microphone, whether it's in a sort of handheld or, or kind of a boom operation, then you definitely will need a shock mount that will take away all, all the sounds of the vibrations. So again, this is how the microphone sounds when it's literally inches uh, from my face or from my mouth. Uh, so now I'm going to kind of move away a little bit and just kind of give you guys, uh, I guess, more of a real world sort of usage. Now, I do have quite a bit of a loud AC running in the house and uh, just can't do anything about it because it's uh, almost 100 degrees outside. So I don't want to die in here sweating. Now this is a very directional microphone, so it is, you know, again, right now it's pointing at my mouth, and this is kind of, I would say, what would be like a normal situation. As in for these YouTube videos, usually I'm gonna have a shotgun microphone, such as this one, mounted sort of like above there, just off camera, pointed like, you know, up here more or less on my chest. Uh, and so again, the distance might be like one, two feet, depending on how wide uh, the, the shot is. So again, this is more or less how uh, this microphone would sound in that kind of a situation. Uh, if you're shooting a film scenario where you have somebody booming the microphone above your talent, again, it's going to sound very similar. Of course, keep in mind that again, if the shot is much wider and you need to put the microphone further out, then uh, again, it's going to be maybe a little bit quieter, but you can adjust the, the audio levels in there. Right now, I'm not adjusting the audio levels like it's kind of was perfectly adjusted you could say when i'm like right here so then the volume is, is really good when i get further away obviously it's going to be a bit more quiet now even though the microphone is very directional uh, it might not be picking up some sounds from behind there but unfortunately the ac is sort of like this tiny little hum and it's all over the house here so uh it's it, there's nothing that the directionality of the microphone can really do about it so uh, just again keep that in mind and now I'm going to kind of move around, maybe go to this side. And as I go back, uh, I mean, I can definitely hear it in my headphones. It's, you know, pretty much cuts out most of the audio, like the levels really drop. So again, this is how it sounds when I'm kind of behind, like 90 degrees. And now 
I'm pretty much behind the microphone. I'm very still close to the microphone, but I'm behind it. So, and now I'm going to go back here to the front. Now in my test so far as a shotgun microphone, this performs brilliantly as in uh, it's again, very directional. So it really does exclude the sound from behind and, and from the sides. Uh, it picks up all the little frequencies, all the little details in the highs and the lows. So like right now, you probably hear my like my lips moving and stuff uh, and I don't want to make it kind of sound I don't know <laughs> kind of too nasty or something but again this is how close I am and it hopefully gives you a good sense of just how, how detailed of a sound you can capture if, if you get really close to somebody's lips or or whatever sound it is that you're recording so like I said if you want to get those little details capture that you can definitely do it if you don't want that then just place the microphone a bit further away so what is this microphone really designed for well it's just like it's the case with most shotgun microphones it's going to be uh, perfect for film tv production kind of documentaries but uh, also as you can see you can see you can use it for youtube videos especially these kind of table kind of reviews as i do them again usually i like to have a shotgun mic there uh, so this way I don't have to worry about any other kind of microphone interference or anything like that. Now in order for this mic to work, you do have to provide phantom power, 48 volts. So with my Rodecaster Pro, obviously that's not a problem. With most audio recorders, it won't be a problem. But if you're planning to cook this up directly to your camera, then just make sure again that your camera is capable of uh, putting out 48 volts. This microphone is uh, 10 inches long and it's built from uh, lightweight brass material. Uh, the XLR connection in the back is actually gold plated, so it's going to give you a better signal. The microphone has a built in bass boost uh, and also it's built to uh, basically resist interference. And I do actually have a lot of signals, like just Wi Fi signals in the house. I have cell phones all around me. I also have the Rode Wireless Me microphone. Uh, I have the transmitter right here, and it's constantly transmitting there to my camera. And again, this microphone does not pick up any of this interference. So you might be wondering uh, what is really the difference, you know, and the reason why this microphone is so much cheaper than, for example, like the MKH416, uh, even though it has the exact same audio quality. Well, uh, I have not tested this microphone out in the field yet, so meaning uh, I don't know how the, for example, the weather ceiling is on this microphone and also how this microphone handles things like uh, wind, sand or whatever it is that you might throw at it. While, while, for example, you're filming out there in real locations. So definitely I'll be doing follow-up videos, kind of more testing out the microphone out in the field. But uh, as you guys can see, using it in a studio or kind of a more controlled environment, like I'm using it right now, this microphone really does deliver the same audio quality. Now, if you guys want me to test it out alongside some of the other microphones, like for example, the MKH, 416 or the Rode NTG2 or whatever other microphones that definitely let me know in the comment section below which mic you'd like me to compare this to and also what kind of other tests you'd like me to do to kind of to do with this microphone. Now I'm going to kind of simulate a little bit of a setting like if I was in a really busy uh, and very loud restaurant. So again, the microphone is pointing at me right now. Now on my phone, I'm just have some ambient sounds from a restaurant. Obviously, when I place it in front of the mic here, you're definitely going to hear it. But if I put it here to the side, you guys, you'll notice right away it cuts down a lot of the sound. And then if I put it behind the, the uh, microphone, you can hear me a lot better. Right Now, again, this is actually pretty loud going on you know, the sound coming in from the microphone. So right now I'll kind of just shut up and let you guys listen just how it works with that. And now let's maybe listen for the noise floor. Again, just keep in mind that I do have an annoying AC running in the back and I cannot do anything about it because otherwise I'd, I would die of heat exhaustion up here. Uh, of course, now there's an airplane flying too. <laughs> But I mean, just looking at the levels over there, I can see that it's it's still actually very good at isolating 
and just sort of picking up the sound directly in front of the microphone. Hopefully this video gives you guys a good idea of what you can expect from the Synco D2 shotgun microphone. If you guys want to see some of the other tests other than outside or indoors alongside other microphones, then uh, let me know in the comment section below exactly what. And as always, if you want to find the latest deals and discounts on this microphone, uh, then follow the links in the description of this video or head on over to my website at tomantosfilms.com. Anyways, that's it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.